Welcome to our tutorial about the Clash tool. We activate the Clash tool from the Space Analysis toolbar. This command is also available by selecting Analyze, Clash. We have another tool similar to the Clash tool. It's called Compute Clash. Let's check this one out first. First, let's select Components. Control select these two components. Click Apply. In the Results area, we see an affirmative indication that there is indeed a clash. CATIA doesn't give any more information using this particular tool. Let's cancel out of this. Right now, Parts 2 and 5 are selected. Let's activate the Clash command. Under Type, select Contact plus Clash and click Apply. CATIA computes and finds a clash between Parts 2 and 5. Let's cancel out of this for now. We'll select Product 1 from our tree so that we can run the Clash tool for our entire assembly. Activate the Clash command again. Click Apply. Let's resize the Check Clash window a little. The first line in the List by Conflict tab is highlighted. In the Type column, we see Clash with a value of minus 0.66. Status is denoted as relevant. Let's take a closer look. We can examine it in the Preview window. Next, let's click on Line 2. Here, the type is shown as Contact, with an interference value of 0. Click in the Status column to change the status to Irrelevant. This means that these two parts are touching, but they don't clash. Now, let's select Line 3. We've got a clash here with an interference value of minus 5.63. We're taking a closer look in the preview window. It looks like this hole is too small for this cylindrical part. Next is line 4. It's a contact. Click the Status column to change the status from Relevant to Irrelevant. Finally, let's take a look at Line 5. We have another clash, a clash between these two parts, with an overlap value of minus 1.25 millimeters. Let's cancel out of here and fix some of these clashes. Obviously, when I mouse over, I see that the cylindrical part sinks into the base plate. Let's undock the View Mode toolbar. Press the Shift key to toggle it to a horizontal position. Let's convert to wireframe. Now, activate the Measure tool. Let's press the Customize button. Let's check Minimum Distance Curve Length, that's probably the right choice for here, and click OK. From the Selection 1 Mode drop-down menu, select Surface Only. Same thing for Selection 2 Mode. Let's select the top surface and the cylindrical face of this blue part. I can tell that I'm selecting the proper face because both of these rings are highlighted. And we have our clash distance at 1 millimeter. Let's check Keep Measure and click OK. 
Now let's go back to Shaded with Edges view mode. We're going to grab the compass and drop it on this face. Let's right click and select Edit. The parameters for Compass Manipulation dialog window opens. We need to move this component in the W direction. Let's enter a value of 1. We'll hit the Tab key. That's because our clash is 1 millimeter. Now let's click Upper. This cylindrical part is sitting right on top of this face now. Let's close it. Let's undo that move. Let's run the clash analysis again. Select Product 1. Type Contact plus Clash. Let me drag this window up a little bit. You see that the first line between Part 1 and Part 2, we've got a contact with a zero value. So we have fixed our first problem. Let's look at the clash between parts 1 and 4. Let's cancel out of this for now. When you're moving components, it's important to keep an eye on the update icon to be sure that everything stays current. Let's click to see what's triggered. Part 2 didn't move back to its previous position. The reason for that is because Part 2 doesn't have a surface constraint to this plate. As you see, these two parts have a coincidence constraint. But this part freely moves in this direction. Let's take a look at this in wireframe mode again. As you see, we do have interference right here. Let's select Measure Item. And we'll select this edge. This gives me a radius of 7.5 millimeters. If I select this edge, I see a radius of 8 millimeters. Basically, there's a 0.5 millimeter interference. Let's click Cancel. Let's return to the Shaded with Edges view. If you're unsure which part you're selecting, just mouse over and watch for the highlight in the specification tree. Let's expand the specification tree. Double click on Part Body to expand that branch. Now we're in the Part Body Workbench. Expand. And let's double click on Sketch 3. I've got a diameter of 16 millimeters. Let's change that. Double click and enter a diameter of 15 millimeters. Tab. Now the hole and the cylindrical part will match each other exactly. Click OK. And let's exit the sketch. Let's double click on product 1 which brings me back to the assembly design workbench. Let's collapse the tree and check if updates appear or not. Also, let's check to make sure we still have the appropriate constraints. Everything appears to be fine. Let's run a clash analysis again. Click Apply. As we see now, there is a contact between parts 1 and 4, but no clash. Let's click the Status column. The status is updated to Irrelevant. Now, let's analyze the clash between parts 2 and 5. 
In this case, we need to move one of these parts or change some dimension. It's a little bit hard to see here, but Katia suggests with this little arrow a resolution for this situation. We can move this part by 1.246 millimeters and we will eliminate our problem. Okay, let's cancel out of this for now. And this concludes our tutorial on the Clash tool.